The Geyer Performing Arts Center was originally built in 1900 and operated by Andrew Geyer as the Geyer Opera House. In 1912, the building was sold and renamed the Scottsdale Theater. In the early years, the main entertainments produced were minstrels, operettas, and vaudeville acts. A 1926 major reorganization changed the focus from live performances to movies. The new marquee said The Strand, and John Bixler was appointed as manager of the movie house. Our theater was one of the first in the area to be equipped with a Vitaphone system for the new talking pictures of the era. In 1942, Bixler became the owner of the theater and continued to show movies until 1969. The lights turned off in 1971 and the building sat dark and quiet for over 16 years. Then in April of 1987, a group of citizens formed Scottsdale Showtime Incorporated, purchased the building, and began renovations. In 1988, the actors and artists of Fayette County produced the first show, Man of La Mancha. In 2005, Showtime reorganized and drew upon their history for a new name, the Geyer Performing Arts Center. The Geyer Performing Arts Center remains the owner of this building, which is a tangible link to the area's prosperous past. If these walls could only talk, they could tell about the thousands of East Huntington and Scottsdale graduates receiving diplomas, or the hundreds of junior and senior class plays, and many, many minstrels, operettas, vaudeville acts, and musicals that stood behind the footlights. But our last 25 years have been just as interesting, so enjoy our stories, laughter, and memories as we reminisce about the shows that have kept us Scottsdale's little off-Broadway theater. Well, it, it, we bought the theater in, in 1987, and it was May, and it, it was really Miller's dream. And so he contacted me if I would be an investor, and I said yes. And um, we were only allowed to purchase uh, 10 shares because he never wanted anyone to be in control. He wanted it to be a community thing. So uh, then Toddy joined, and then uh, Betty Shower and Bert Shower and Kathy Shower, but we still needed one more to buy the theater and get a contractor. So we went to Scottsdale Civic and Industrial, and they came aboard. And so we had our money to start out, and we hired Tony Barr as the general contractor, and then Miller was responsible for the um, renovation and all of the theater. The theater, when we first got it, before we moved in, uh, it was rat infested. The fly, where the, you go up to lower the drops down, had about this much bird dirt in it because the place was inf infested with uh, pigeons and birds and all. So we actually, some of us actually put on ma masks, went up in, shoveled the bird dirt into buckets, lowered it by bucket down to be taken out and disposed of. Lifted all the seats, unscrewed all the seats, took them out, had them painted and re recovered, and brought in water hoses and just hosed down the entire floor of the, the main, main seating area. During the renovation, Showtime had basically one paid group of employees, which was a construction firm, and they did a lot of the heavy lifting. However, other than that, it was all done by volunteers. There were over 80,000 volunteer hours put in in a very short period of time. The major thing actors and artists did though, we renovated the balcony. We scraped gum off the bottom of wooden seats, we painted the wooden seats, we got it ready to go. And then after that we moved to the downstairs areas. I had a car, <laughs> it was about 10 years old, and I was buying a new car. And so I donated my old car to the theater. Um, and I, uh, you know, after first consulting with my CPA, who said that I could deduct the purchase price of my car since I had never written it off, 
uh, on my taxes for work that I could deduct the purchase price and that the theater of course would be able to um, make whatever monies were uh, that you know that they could uh, sell tickets and they sold two dollar tickets on this car um, thanks to uh, Don Graft and Doug Graft they fixed it up they put a new back seat in it they fixed up it, that was back when they had those vinyl roofs and, and it was a uh, an Oldsmobile uh, V8 engine and still running at any rate they sold two dollar tickets and I think they raised about eighteen hundred dollars with the tickets the ticket went off, the number went off, and a gentleman from Connellsville won the car for his $2 ticket. And mommy would say she saw the car every so often running up through town. <laughs> so, so it was, that was very, uh, it, you know, it was a lot of fun. And uh, another um, part of fundraiser that I was involved with, they were looking for um, unique things that they could auction off. And this was before the days of the Guy or Gala, where you do that sort of thing with the baskets and all. That, and, I thought, well, what can I offer? Because I lived and worked down in the Annapolis, Washington, D.C. area. I had a sailboat. And so I offered a cruise on the Chesapeake Bay. And of course, there were bids, and uh, a, an ultimate winner, the Harmonings, won the cruise on the Chesapeake Bay. I never thought that anybody would come down to Annapolis to go for this sail on the Chesapeake, <laughs> but they did. And, um, and it turned out to be such a wonderful lasting memory in that when I moved back to town the Harmonings would see me on the street and that's the first thing they would say is they remembered the sale and what I remembered is the money it brought in for the guy. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun for everybody. We've had a lot of fun. Well the first show I remember about uh, Toddy Kiefer, she was uh, you know instrumental in, in restarting the theater and uh, uh, it was so hot. It was in the middle of the summer. It was one of those summers that was just unbelievably hot. And we were practicing here and working here with no air conditioning. Of course, sawdust was flying, paint, you know, they were still trying to refinish the whole place. And, and, uh, and so that and very hot. And so it came up to showtime and, uh, and there was no air conditioning. And the night of the uh, practice, uh, the run through, a big piece of equipment is over to the side of the stage up in the balcony and it's just going full blast and it was an air conditioner. At the last moment, Toddy Kiefer had arranged with the local air conditioner vendor this big air conditioner, which was great. We felt all so much better, but we couldn't hear anything. I knew, I knew Toddy certainly because she was around a lot. She, she I th believe she donated the uh, warehouse that we used uh, for storage equi of equipment. Of course, she was always helping us out financially because we were always desperately in need of that. And I, her sons were involved in some of our productions that we did here as well. So yeah, we were well aware of her. She was an angel to the organization for a long time. Toddy Kiefer was a super heart of gold, wonderful person that would go out of her way for you and say anything to, that's uh, good. And uh, you would hear her laugh in the audience and you could decipher her laugh at every show, whether it was funny or not, you heard her laugh. And it, it's sort of freaky because uh, uh, shows since she's passed, you, you sort of hear her cackle out there and her laugh and uh, it, she's, truly a heart of gold, good person. She seemed to be the driving force for a lot of years. She was what, kind of the glue that kept everything together and kept the peace, I think, for, in the beginning at least. Oh, she was wonderful. I met her years ago. I used to sing for weddings, and she played for me the first time at her church, and it was wonderful. That, that's how I met her. And then she was in, um, that movie, the first show we did, I think it was the women, only she just had like a walk-on part and put a fur coat on. She was, she was a wonderful lady, but she smoked too much. Uh, it was for Ron Bronson. It was called The Women. And I only had, I was only in one act, but that was my start here. Well, originally I got involved as an actress on the stage. I auditioned for Joseph, 
which was one of my favorite shows at the time. So I got the chance to work with uh, Toby, Toby Mancuth that year, and just fell in love with the place and had such a good experience with, with Toby and with um, Julie as the vocal director and had such a good time here that I came back and did a few more shows. My first show at the Geyer was Once Upon a Mattress. Uh, my understanding is that we were the third cast <laughs> for that, uh, so third time was a charm. <laughs> we went up in the spring, I guess it's been seven years ago. It was 1776. And then I did Mousetrap. My first show, I was seven or eight, uh, we did The Wizard of Oz here, and I was a munchkin. And from the beginning, when my mom had read in the paper that we were doing, that they were doing The Wizard of Oz here, um, I knew I wanted to be Dorothy. So I marched in here that day of, her, of uh, you know, the audition and I was so sure I was gonna get Dorothy, but you know, they looked at me and they were like, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> uh, how about you're our lead munchkin? And I was like, all right, I'll take it. So <laughs> that was my first show here. I wore a sand pail on my head and cute little knee socks up to here. Well, my first show could have been Man of La Mancha, but I had my first marching band gig as a senior in college and band camp started on Monday, and the show was Saturday, Sunday, and it was in Oklahoma. So I couldn't do the show. So my first show was actually um, Yeoman of the Guard in August of 1990. And Martha directed that, and she also basically found the score and the libretto at West Virginia University's library. It wasn't commercially available, but she wanted to do it so much, she copied the whole thing. She copied the whole thing for everybody. My first show in this theater, opening night of Man of La Mancha. The very first show I was involved with was the very first show that was performed here when the theater opened. I technical directed Man of La Mancha and that was my introduction to the theater really. Man of La Mancha. And I played the role of Sancho. It's the first time I met uh, Ed Thornblay and uh, from there we hit it off. We have a great friendship. We still do. As a matter of fact, we stay in touch uh, quite frequently. Yeah. Well, I just, I remember fools so much. They teased me so much about the uh, wave. And I was up, way up high, looking down over the the set uh -huh. and um, it was just a crazy show all the things that happened in that and, and and I recently came here to see it again with other actors in it which was kind of fun. The first show that I was involved with was The Music Man in 1993. How it started actually is one of the to me one of the funniest and most fond memories I have of the entire theater. My daughter was 12 and I had seen an audition notice in the paper, and we decided to come down here and audition. My mother-in-law knew Toddy Kiefer, and Toddy told my mother-in-law to encourage us to audition. We came. I thought, well, I really wanted Julie to get the part of Amaryllis, but I thought, I'll audition, maybe I'll get in the chorus. First week went by, didn't hear anything. Second week went by, didn't hear anything. About a day or so after the second week had passed, I got a call from George Banks. Actually, Julie answered the phone and said, Mom, it's that George Banks from the Scottsdale Theater. And I went to the phone and he said, Karen, I've decided I would like to use both of you in the show. I'd like Julie to be in the chorus and I'd like you to play the part of Marion. I said, you're kidding. And he said, no, I'm not. Should I be? I don't think most people that go into an audition go in thinking they're not going to get the part or not wanting the part. I went into it not expecting to get anything but chorus and not even wanting anything. Anyway, I did the part. Julie had a ball in the chorus and that was the beginning of our love affair with the theater. It has to do with the shows that I wrote with Jim Oberly. We did seven, I think, uh, children's plays uh, at For Christmas. And we had enormous casts. I remember in Brooms, we just called the kids A through Z. There were, six, there were 26 children, plus a lot of adults. Uh, Linda Banks was in that, and Toby, and Kathy Hockman, and um, 
so it was a just the act of collaboration is really fun. It's fun to start out a show, and Jim's a wonderful collaborator. We we would sit and we would talk about what the show was going to be about, and then I would come up with some lyrics and some dialogue, and then he would just sit down at the piano, and and music would come out. I don't know how this happens. It's one of the, these amazing things that happens with theater, but uh, he would write these terrific songs, and I still remember the songs. The songs are wonderful, wonderful to, to think about. So we started out, we did one called The Magic Toy Shop, and his brother, Chris, was in that. Chris is now doing theater in, in uh, Washington, D.C. And then we did The Night After, which was about three children who were in a pageant who didn't come to the right night. They missed the performance, and so they're in deep trouble. And then I read a review of a play called Stomp. I hadn't seen this play, but I read a review of it, and that's when I decided I would write brooms, because we used the sounds of brooms in, instead of uh, the percussive, I guess they're instruments. They use a lot of garbage can lids and things in Stomp. I later got to see it, and it was fun. And then I did a couple based on um, something called The Christmas Revel, which is a show that they do in, um, I think, all over the country. And it's actually celebrating the solstice, which occurs on December 21st. So we did a Christmas Revel, and then we did another Christmas Revel. And then I directed The Tempest, so I wrote a children's play that was based on The Tempest. It was called Partial Assembly Required. And it was about parents shopping and the uh, frantic shopping things. and. Uh, that was an interesting play because I had just gotten involved with uh, computers and I had cookies and um, a computer exploding and people falling into cyberspace and it was fun. And then we did uh, a takeoff on Why the Chimes Rang, which is a very famous Christmas play. That, that's really tough. Every show that I've been involved with is, has been special and remains special and trying to pick a show that is a favorite is really very, very difficult. But of all of the shows I've directed, there is a little two-character show that I did with Martha Oliver and Barb Slavin called Grace and Glory. And it was a straight show. It was a drama, not a comedy, although there were some comic things in it. And audiences are never that large for straight shows like that. But anyone who, who saw that show actually saw Martha Oliver and Barb Slavin transformed into those characters. It was just really, a really a very special memory that I have. There's not a lot um, arts-wise that goes on around here that's so easily accessible, I guess. Um, I mean, I know like you, have, there's that little museum in Connellsville, and you know, there's like the fairs, they'll have crafts and stuff like that here in Scottsdale. And I mean, there's things here and there, but really I think this is the most, you know, people can just pay a few bucks to come see a show, pay nothing to come be in a show, you know, and just get involved however they want to, you know, and it's just a great way to bring art to the community because there aren't that many other ways to do it. I think it means a lot. Um, Brad, there have been people who have, and, and they've come back to me in recent years, people who started out on our stage as, as children who have gone on with careers in um, production, entertainment, of the arts. Um, if Angeline O'Keefe is right now, she just finished her master's down at uh, um, University of Pittsburgh. And uh, she's been out to LA. She's, uh, you know, she's likes to produce um, shows. And she was her start was here on our stage. Maggie um, was another one who got her start here on the Geyer stage and went on with the national traveling troupe with uh, Les Mis. Uh, she traveled across the United States and up into Canada and back and others. There, um, 
I think Martha Oliver and, and Richard Means, certainly they were um, on the board and, and active on, with the Geyer when I was living down in Maryland, but uh, uh, they even said that somebody who had their start on the Geyer stage was active in uh, theater in Germany. <laughs> so we've had an international um, effect. Well, anything connected with the arts is a good thing. It gets people in. Uh, it's in all ages for the most part. So it's live entertainment is something that for a small town like this, it's great to have because, well, this just starting up the one in Connellsville. So that's nice that there's gonna be another outlet for people rather than going to go to Greensburg, to go to Uniontown, to go into Pittsburgh, to see a show or to be involved in a show, there's, it's here. And it's not just uh, performing. As everyone has always said, you know, there's always need for carpenters, painters, other technicians, electricians. Uh, Joseph, we've enjoyed our time over here. We've not been here that long. It's been about three, four years, which is, I guess, a nice little, <laughs> nice little mountain now that you're getting older. Every, every moment counts. But yeah, we've enjoyed all the time that we've had here, spent here. The people are really genuinely terrific. Made a lot of good friends right, and met a lot of, of new friends. people. People that he knew from the past that I had, I had, didn't. Had never met. Had right. never met. <laughs> heard him talk about. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun and it's, it's a good place to be and it needs to continue on for a long, long time. I think here at the Geyer, we have an opportunity to come together and experience life in a very real way that I've never had anywhere else. Here there's uh, singing and dancing and, and laughter and family, both on and off the stage. I've seen the most unlikely people become friends and lovers, and I've seen people who uh, were set in their ways become more relaxed, and people who, who were more relaxed gain more discipline. Uh, I just love what the theater has done for me, uh, being with my children, having the experience of my children growing up here next to me in the theater has, has been powerful. So I'm just thankful to be part of the Geyer family. It's empowered me to be a stronger person and a, a better teacher, and I'm just thrilled to be part of it. I think what was neat was when we decided to celebrate the 20th season, we started with the Toddy Awards. And it was our own little award show, like the Tonys. And I think it brought everyone back to a place that they then remembered that, wow, this is the reason we're here. It's just to do good theater. And I think that as we grow forward and we see, and, and the years ahead, uh, the more we realize that it's just about good theater, the further the, 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 this building will go, the bigger the shows will be, the bigger the audiences will be, and I think that's why we're all here good theater.